Guadalajara, France against West Germany. A rematch of the memorable semi-final four years earlier, when France had led 3-1, only to lose on penalties. It took only nine minutes for West Germany to take the lead. Joel Batz in the French goal handed it to them, fumbling Andy Bremer's shot following a short free kick from Felix Magat. The ambition of France to avenge that semi-final in Seville four years earlier had been drastically threatened. Bats had been brilliant against Brazil, and he would be haunted by this error. France responded with some fine interpassing, but by the dying seconds they'd virtually given up hope. German substitute Rudi Foller scored a second goal, which was almost academic. This time, unlike in 1982, the Germans hadn't needed penalties. Diego Maradona personally earned the right to take all his glorious talents into a World Cup final. In 12 mesmeric minutes, he took Belgium's mass defence apart with all the grace of a ballet dancer and the ruthless efficiency of an executioner. It was not only two more marvellous individual goals, but his entire contribution to the game, which left Argentina looking a class superior to Belgium. Earlier in the opening match in Spain's World Cup, Belgium had played Maradona out of the game and won 1-0. He was younger then, still growing up in the game. Now he was captain of his country and a footballer of proven genius. Belgium didn't complain in defeat. Reaching the semi-final itself had been prize enough. They knew they'd been beaten by the greatest player on earth. Diego Maradona just missed out on Argentina's World Cup success of 1978. Already an international at 17, he was felt just too young to make the final selection of 22. Against Belgium, he made sure that he would play in the final of 1986. For France, it might have been different if goalkeeper Bats had kept out Andy Bremer's dipping shot. After that, the organisation of the Germans stifled the French flair. So for France, the only consolation, the match for third place against Belgium. Four years earlier, they'd been beaten by Poland at this stage. But now they put on a brilliant show in a magnificent game in Puebla, with both sides fully committed to attack. France had finished third before in 1958, when Just Fontaine created the World Cup scoring record he still holds. 13 goals in the finals. France made six changes from their semi-final side, while the Belgian team was more along the lines of that which had gone down to Argentina. The entertainment, which was considerable in Puebla, continued into extra time. France were without five of their star names. Injuries and fatigue had caught up with Bats, Bossis, Gires, Platini and Rosto. Belgium, by contrast, had virtually a full-strength side on duty in Puebla. That may have been more of a handicap than a virtue, despite taking an early lead through Jan Kerlemans, World Cup battle fatigue ultimately proved their undoing. It was 28 years since France had finished third in the World Cup. Everything they had achieved since the halcyon days of Raymond Copa and Juste Fontaine had always been compared with that era. Not any longer. French football now had a new point of reference. Jean-Marc Ferreri, once nicknamed the new Platini, equalised for France. Jean-Pierre Papin had put them into the lead before half-time. Nico Klaassen's equaliser for Belgium after 72 minutes sent his teammates into extra time for the third time in four games. The challenge was to prove too much. France pulled away again. Gengini scored in an undignified but ultimately rewarding goalmouth scramble. Finally, Manuel Amoros, having been brought down by Heretz, jumped up to convert the penalty himself. The champions of Europe have finished third in the world. Extra 
time was too much for Belgium. The third time for them in four matches in 13 days, they'd had to play the extra half an hour. So third place for France, fourth for Belgium. Now the climax of a tournament that had always been absorbing and sometimes really touched the heights. Argentina, champions in 1978, against West Germany, winners in 1954 and 1974. The skill of Maradona against the strategy of Franz Beckenbauer. Argentina were unchanged, the same team which had been too good for Belgium, the same 11 which had knocked out England in the quarter-finals. Beckenbauer brought back Thomas Berthold after suspension, he'd been sent off against Mexico, and gave Lota Mateus the task of dogging Maradona's footsteps. Argentina have been, over the years, one of the great football exporters. Thousands of players have preached their gospel of technical arrogance around the world since the big Italian clubs first swooped for them in the wake of the 1930 World Cup, when Argentina were runners-up. Four members of Argentina's lineup in the Estadio Azteca were with foreign clubs. Four more signed contracts soon after the final whistle. The conveyor belt, it seems, will never stop. Beckenbauer set Mateus to follow Maradona everywhere. On the surface, he seemed to have had his poorest game of the finals. In fact, he was fouled for the free kick, which produced Argentina's first goal. He was instrumental in the move, which created their second. And he provided the true pass from which Buruchaga would score the winner. Beckenbauer had never made any secret of his belief that his team weren't yet good enough to win the World Cup. Wait for us in four years' time, he had promised. Germany had reached the final thanks to traditional virtues, such as effort, commitment and a solid defence. In a competition of erratic standards, their consistency had proved a winning factor. Until, that is, they met the one outstanding class team. The Germans appeared overawed by the occasion for the first hour of the action. They woke up to find themselves two goals down and then, and only then, applied themselves to attacking Argentina with 17 minutes to go. Rummenigge made up one goal. Suddenly, West Germany saw a chink of light. Argentina were vulnerable after all. Another corner on the left. Brazilian referee Romualdo Arpi Filho showed Enrique the yellow card for time-wasting. When the corner curled into the danger zone, Argentina's defence was again found wanting. Bremer's corner. Thomas Berthold with the first header. Rudi Foller following up. Germany level 2-2. Six minutes remained to the drama. Argentina had to start all over again. Maradona, who else, slid a deadly pass forward in the move which confirmed Argentina's mastery in the tournament. Buruchaga found the net. The hand of God would shortly lift the World Cup. No goals for Maradona this time, leaving Gary Lineker as the top scorer in the finals with six. But the trophy itself, ample consolation for the captain. Maradona's genius may have been flawed by his notorious goal against England, but there was no doubt that the World Cup of 1986 was presented into the hands of the world's greatest player.